the ultimate battle. Who will win? <laughs> okay, maybe I shouldn't do that voice. Hey everybody, Alexander Morgan here, but my friends call me Schmorgle. Another late night in the newly LED'd studio, working on another video that's just not quite done yet. So instead of rushing a creative one, I spontaneously made a new video. So I figured I'd do something new, a YouTube first, and talk about Dawes. <laughs> Woo! Yes, if you search things like, what's the best DAW? Or how do make good beat better? You'll often find a plethora of videos comparing these digital audio workstations. That's what it stands for in case you didn't know. I didn't know for a very long time. In my experience, most DIY bedroom lurking producers tend to lean toward a short list of programs. As for myself, I pretty much just use the two big hitters, Apple's Logic Pro and Ableton's, well, Ableton. And yes, I hear you old schoolers yelling at me. What about Pro Tools? Pro Tools is the industry standard. Shut up, not anymore. If Phineas prefers Logic, then I prefer Logic too. Or do I? In this video, I'm gonna break down a couple of the key features of both programs and show you why I prefer one over the other. I'm gonna be coming at this mainly from a songwriter's perspective, writing a song into and through these DAWs. I often consider my workstation to be more of a writing tool than even a place for sound design. If you relate to this and you're kind of sitting on the fence between both programs, my goal is to clear that up for you by the end of this video. But before we hop in, if you're new here, welcome. If you dig this video, consider giving it a like or even subscribing to the channel. I got a fun of ton, what? I got a ton of fun creative videos in the back catalog in case you're interested. But first, the battle of the Dawes. Okay, so now that I'm in the streamer setup, twitch.tv slash Morkel, we're gonna hop into these programs. I'm breaking things up into five categories, recording audio, manipulating audio, MIDI, which I'll sort of lump in synths and drums, plug-in fluidity, and just the general weight and flexibility of the program. I'll go ahead and timestamp those sections below just so you can skip to them if you want. So it's gonna be some recorded nonsense just to show you how it works. Ooh, I'm singing to a tempo, yeah. I'm singing to a tempo. So there's my song. One really cool and important key feature of Logic is the way that you can comp audio on the same track. If you just go ahead and hit record and do another take. Ooh, I'm singing to a tempo, yeah. I'm singing to a tempo. It makes a really great comping folder for you to edit in. This is one of my favorite features in Logic, period, is how easy it is to comp vocals and any other audio. I can very quickly take my favorite parts of either take. Ooh, I'm singing to a tempo, yeah. I just chose arbitrary parts and it seems to crossfade it pretty effectively on its own. This is a great way to get into the fine details of takes if you like one consonant of one word better than the other take. I will often just hop over, no matter what DAW I'm in, into Logic just to use this comp feature. All right, recording audio in Ableton. Also very simple. Here I am recording some audio here. I am recording audio to a tempo. Now, if I wanted to comp over this, and I just go ahead and record again, I am recording audio. We don't have the same sort of stack as we did in Logic. You can pull and mix and match takes here, but if you wanna do a proper comp, you're gonna to have to make a new track every time. Drag your take you like over here, mix and match, throw them together. A little bit more of a pain to comp stuff, but more traditional. So typically if I wanna record vocals or something and I'm working in Ableton, I will hop over to Logic just so I can comp it over there. In many DAWs, you can transpose audio, you can fine tune it, you can fix and move and change the gain. You can do a bunch of stuff to manipulate it. This is of course the same in Logic, but it's under different menus and sort of a different methodology ultimately. Over here in this section under region, we can do a few things with this audio. We can obviously mute and loop it. We can transpose it. Ooh, I'm singing to a tempo, yeah. Lastly, we have gain, which is a very important tool if you wanna match volume here without having to change your fader. Certain sections might be a lot quieter. You can boost that gain to match this part a little bit more cohesively. 
I'm singing to a tempo, yeah. A key feature within Logic in terms of manipulating audio is its flex tool. When you engage the flex tool here, it's an all-in-one multi-tool of messing with your file. You can flex time in a number of ways through rhythmic, slicing, polyphonic, speed, all kinds of, of weird, fun stuff. And what's super useful, especially if you're on a budget, flex pitch. A lot of the best auto-tunes cost a lot of money. The flex tool does a decent job. It's not gonna beat your Melodynes or all of the industry standard stuff, but it's gonna, it's gonna get you where you need at least. We can see our file within the flex tool here. These are all the perceived notes that the flex tool identifies. Ooh, I'm singing to a tempo, yeah. These waves here are showing you the vibrato, how far off or on pitch you are. To show you an example of what you can do with it, you could just highlight everything and say, hey, perfect pitch, please. Ooh, I'm singing to a tempo, yeah. We can obviously move the pitch wherever we want. Ooh, I'm singing to a tempo, yeah. We can mess with form and shifting within this. Ooh, I'm singing. Ooh, I'm singing. I'm singing to a That's just scratching the surface of what the flex tool can do. It can align drums. It can align everything to be on a grid or pull it off the grid. You're not always going to escape without some audio artifacts. That is one thing. But the fact that this is already built in and super accessible is useful. Ableton is basically royalty when it comes to manipulating audio. With a simple double click, I get all these options right here. If you have the warp feature toggled here, we can transpose it without changing the tempo. I am recording. I am recording. If you untoggle it, we can change the pitch and it will obviously change the shape of the audio. I am recording audio. Fun. You can right here reverse it and You can use automation here to change pretty much any parameter of your audio. So I can mess with the pitch over time. And I am recording audio to a tempo. It's just really accessible. It's right there. You can pull all these different modulations right out of just double clicking on the piece of audio. Super accessible. So Logic comes with a ton of stock instruments. In fact, you get all this stuff over here right out of the box. You got your bass sounds. Some synthesizers. Electric pianos. And a whole bunch of drum kits. Obviously you can mess with the MIDI however you like, like in every DAW. Change length, position, velocity, standard stuff. In terms of other MIDI manipulation, there are drum racks, uh, arpeggiators, though I personally don't think that they're very powerful. Especially the drum rack, it can be not very welcoming. Help! The sampler's not bad. It's pretty basic as far as things go. Drop in your audio and manipulate it how you like. Tim, Tim, Tim. Standard stuff. MIDI is everything you expect from this program as well. You can save your favorites over here. Ableton comes with some pretty good stuff, especially in terms of drums and some synths. I usually use third-party synths over Ableton's. There are two exceptions though, the built-in wavetable and analog. When it comes to building your own synth sound, Ableton makes it super easy. You can start with a single oscillator and a sine wave and then just go nuts. Changing the particular waveform in that oscillator. adding a sub, messing with a second oscillator. And once you're deep into envelopes and LFOs, you're totally off to the races. <laughs> Similarly with the analog tool, the possibilities are endless. Very powerful tools right out of the box. Which leads me to the most wonderful thing, the general functionality of Ableton's drum rack and sampler, and simpler, a more simple sampler. It's so easy. It just works. You drag and drop what you want. You can manipulate the audio so quickly, so intuitively. The drum rack itself is worth the price of admission. Throw in your favorite sounds. There's a loop there. I'll just throw it in here. Just take that, that first kick of it, easily pull it over here. 
I can transpose it. You can add filters to it. It's all just right there in the box. Same with these synths. If I go ahead and just play a chord, I can go up to my MIDI effects, add an arpeggiator if I want. And right off the bat, it's intuitive arpeggiator. You can automate all these things right there on the fly. So intuitive, so good. Now the plugins work pretty much like any other digital audio workstation you've ever seen for the most part. The main thing that frustrates me the most about this is that there's just a lot of clicking happening. You can favorite stuff, obviously, and you can drag and drop, but there's a lot of sub menus if you're just trying to be creative and pull stuff out. And I wanna add a compressor. And then I gotta click in here and I wanna add an EQ. After that, you're opening and closing every one of these menus every time you wanna pop in here. Not the end of the world by any means, but once you see what Ableton does, you get a little bit spoiled having everything there right in front of you. There's just a lot of clicking happening here to change even the slightest bit. You can obviously automate everything, choose a plugin you wanna mess with and change that parameter. Most plugins work for Logic, I've found. I haven't had many issues. The one thing is that if there's a bunch of plugins on a channel and you should be busting things where you can, but Logic has been known to crash on me. I have a fairly new laptop 2019 and it still will crash if there's a lot going on. This is to be expected, but compared to some other programs, I see it happen just slightly more than otherwise. And lastly, just being creative within these plugins is a little bit more challenging in something like Logic. It's less easy to just grab a tool, to grab a toy off the shelf and really get into it. Definitely feels a little more organized, I would say, but someone who has OCD like me kind of need everything just right there ready to grab. The basic features that come packed into this thing, that's its onboard compressor, it's EQ, uh, distortion delays, all that stuff, will totally do the trick. Don't need to spend extra money if you don't got it. So I wanna go ahead and throw some plugins on here and I'll show you what I mean in terms of accessibility. Now this took me a minute to get used to, but since I've seen it, I, I honestly can't go back. Here's a little vocal take of my new hit song. La 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 la. Sounds beautiful. Could use some plugins. Go ahead and do a basic version of my vocal chain. Throw a saturator in there. I don't know, I need some compression. Pop it in. How about an eight band EQ? Sounds good to me. Maybe some echo and some reverb. Wow, look at all my effects right there in a chain. All I, I you know, ducks in a row. I can see it all. You get my point. It's so easy, it's right there. And I see every element I've added right in front of me, ready to be tweaked. In real time, I can see how everything is being triggered. La, 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 la. I don't have to open 10 windows and close 10 windows. I can manipulate it right here. La, 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 la. And you can automate any of this by just hitting A, tapping the thing you wanna change and drawing your stuff. Music. And finally, weight and flexibility. Logic, despite being my DAW of choice when recording just pure audio, is a little hefty. It kind of feels like GarageBand when you're moving these around. You can change the smart snap off and on, which helps a little bit. But just the way the audio works, it feels blocky. It's all sort of stuck together. But if you're coming from something like Pro Tools, you're gonna to be used to just sort of clicking where you want, moving the session, pulling and dragging it where you want, changing just that one bit of audio, you wanna sort of double it or move it over to the other side of the session. It's harder here. It's a little bit brickier, blockier, hefty, it will definitely feel good to people who have not spent time in a workstation very much, especially if you're coming from something like GarageBand. This is a way easier step into a broader world of audio production. But again, when you want to get moving and grooving and have all these things and you want to just pull some audio, break it apart, move it over here, it feels a little heftier. That can be satisfying when you have a lot of tracks and a lot of audio and you want it to just stay put and be where it is and, and grab it and, and make sure it sticks there but it too can be limiting. Ableton is as light as air. You can pull things, push things, stretch things, take little bits of audio, move it over there. Wow. Copy it and double it really fast. Take one and pitch it a little differently, change the volume of the other. All right there within one screen, one tool, all the parameters. You can turn snap on and off, but it still feels light. 
it'll click in just in little intervals or as big as you want. It just feels light and easy and ah. So the question at hand, which DAW is the best? And the truthful answer is, yes, you guessed it, there is no best DAW. Truly, it's a matter of preference. If you already have either of these programs, or any DAW for that matter, the most important thing you can do is just learn it well. Just dive deep into whatever you have available, and eventually you'll push up against that skill ceiling. Honestly, limitations are the best hooks into creativity. Especially if you're on a budget or already learned another program, you really just gotta make the music. And I know, this is like a super artsy fartsy answer, but it's true. And as far as these two behemoths go, you really can't go wrong with either one. They are both super powerful and more than viable. But honestly, Ableton's better. Bye.